Hey everyone, John here, and I'm going to be giving you this week's Hatch Facts, and we're going to be diving a little deeper into ESA fonts. Uh, you might have noticed I've been really busy over the last eight or nine months creating lots and lots of optional fonts that are available to be directly loaded into your Hatch, Wilcom, or Janome software. And, and ESA fonts are special because they are truly object-based. They're not just stitch files. And that's why I love to, uh, to play with them because you have so many options of changing things after the fact that you wouldn't have otherwise. So I'm in my lettering right now and I'm just going to type in two letters put in my initials J and D and now I'm going to drop down and I'll choose a different font something that I can uh, play with a, a little bit better uh, let's just choose this one the chancery font and I'm going to do the unthinkable right now this lettering is like half an inch in height and I'm going to actually change this to five inches we're going to do this for a large uh, monogram maybe you know on a towel or on a pillow or whatever whatever we want to place it on but you're gonna see that this actually becomes a rather large design and it is right now if we go over to our fill types it is in satin stitches now you have the ability uh, even within the I guess customizer version which allows you to do lettering layout you have the ability to call up these fonts change them from a satin to a tatami stitch you can play with your different emboss fills you can hit the H key on your keyboard and you can move these around you can click on any of the objects and you can you know customize the objects in um, you know node form by changing you can change from straight nodes to curved nodes whatever you want to do it's just incredibly versatile and that's all within the customizer version now we're going to go a, a little bit deeper and we're going to show you some of the other cool things that you can do within the creator and digitizer that you might not even have uh, been aware of so i'm going to change this back to satin now one thing i do want to point out is this auto split here is an incredibly useful tool and this is available in all of the modules and what the auto split does is it looks at the objects and anything over seven millimeters will automatically be spliced it'll be auto spliced so that you don't have any snagging of stitches or uh, you know loss of the integrity of the design if you're actually stitching on wearable items because you know we know that if the stitch gets too long bad things are going to happen so we're going to have the option of turning that on or off. In this situation, it really doesn't matter because we're going to actually uh, go in and, and modify this even further. And I'm going to click on the actual object in my resequence. And you can tell that it's lettering because you'll always see an A beside the object type. And that means that it's in a, a lettering mode. That is an ESA font. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my editing options and we're going to go to edit objects and I'm going to go all the way down here to the break apart tool now as soon as I click this you're going to see that in our resequence it broke it apart into two separate letters now what I could do at this point is I'm just going to grab both of those and I'm going to duplicate them right now so that I have them uh, done twice here and I'm going to change this actually to red now the red is obviously within my sequence view last and that's why I can you know visually see it on the screen and just remember that if you're out of true view anytime you have a selected object it will highlight but for the sake of visually seeing what I'm doing and the effects that I'm creating I'm gonna keep it actually in the true view mode now also remember that right now when I'm in lettering mode within my uh, you know fill stitches it shows that there's actually uh, five different stitch types that I can play with which are you know tatami satin 3d satin and Boston and, and the blanket stitch and any of these four I could basically change it to but if I want to open up other options and what I'm gonna do while these two are highlighted I'm gonna break them apart even more and when I click break apart again you're gonna see that that a disappeared it's no longer being viewed as an ESA object. It's now broken down into its individual components. And what's beautiful about that is look what's happened. We actually have more options that have opened up on the screen. If I go undo and re, you know, revert it back to an ESA font, uh, there's only five stitch types that are there. If I redo, 
now I have a whole bunch of other options that have appeared. And if I want to, you know, go in and change either individually as objects or individually as letters, I can come in and I can uh, highlight the objects that I want. And I could actually use a motif fill. And that actually creates a really cool effect that otherwise I wouldn't have uh, been able to gotten within my standard lettering. And any of these motifs are now available for me to play with. So it's really fun because now all of those hundreds of different stitch uh, types that are available, you can literally at the click of a button implement them within the, uh, the you know, fonts that are built into the software. So we're just going to choose a, uh, you know, a pattern that kind of fits uh, the object that we're doing. And I'm just going to leave that one exactly as it is. So now I've created that as a motif. Now here's what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this J, which is still as an ESA form, and I'm going to actually bring it down in my sequence view so that it is uh, right below the first two objects. Okay, now I'm also going to, well, it's highlighted as an ESA, I'm going to break that one apart as well. So now it's actually being seen again as objects. And I'm going to highlight those two just so that I can uh, select them. And you'll also notice that something else did appear. I'm not only seeing uh, fill stitches as uh, you know, uh, solid fills, but you can also now implement the outlines. So I can go in here, implement outlines, and actually put a satin stitch around those objects. So that is really awesome because when I go in here and look at this, I now have a motif fill with a satin object. But there's a couple little things that I might want to go in and fix. And this is the beauty, again, of having the editing version of the program. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more just so I can see this crossover area. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my knife tool and I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to click all of these objects across and enter. Now you're going to see that it's going to break it apart even further and now I can come in and I can delete those objects that are going to give me trouble. So I have that object there and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come in and let's just go to my uh, reshape outlines. I can come in now and I can take that one object, move it down to get rid of that satin stitch. So you have the, the ability to change anything within there and now that actually looks nice and clean. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the, uh, the D. I'm going to take this one, I'm going to move it all the way down to the bottom over here and then I'm going to go in and I'm going to break it apart. It turns it into objects. Again, I'm going to grab all of those pieces and I'm going to change them to an outline and ask them to be a satin stitch. And now I have all of my satin stitches. Now, again, there's a little bit more cleaning up here to do, but it's not gonna take that long. All I have to do is go to my knife tool, and I'm gonna click right here, here, and then right over to this point here. And let's just enter that, and it's gonna break apart those objects. Let's just clean that one up there. That one's gone now. I'm going to come here, clean up that little object, and I'm going to see if I can grab this one right here. Again, let's go to our reshaping, and I'm just going to make sure that I move those points so that uh, running stitch disappears. And I could even you know, grab this one because it's really unnecessary for it to be that aggressive out to the side. Move it up to there, and then we can just pan up to the top of the design, and we can see that we have a little bit of stuff here to fix as well. So let's just uh, go in and grab that one object. And again, I'm going to use my knife and we're going to break apart our pieces here all the way across, just like that. Enter it. It's going to separate that object again. Let's grab that piece and delete it. And if I want to, I can now come into this piece here. It's highlighted. I'm going to go to my reshaping tool and make sure that it's reshaped properly, which it is. So now all I have to do is go to my knife tool again and let's grab this one here and go all the way across and let's enter. And then again, we're going to see that it's going to actually separate those objects. Actually, let's get out of that. I want to escape. I'm going to, have to do that again. I actually had a different object highlighted. So now that it's not highlighted, I can continue to break that apart with my knife. We can see that we also have these objects here, which we're going to get rid of. 
and then I can come in and I can reshape the objects right on here. Let's just grab this one and reshape it. And that way I know that I'm going to get rid of these pieces here and delete that. Let's just grab that one to select the object and we're going to just delete that object. And now it looks actually nice and clean. So I was able to go in using my knife tool, breaking apart the objects, getting them uh, out of being an actual ESA file and turning them into, you know, uh, the actual objects that can be not only changed from your fill pattern types, but also outlining them for satin stitches. So this is something where I, I wanted to show you because I don't think that many people were aware that you had this much uh, control and versatility within your ESA fonts. And uh, you know, again, uh, you can do some amazing things with the uh, customizer version that you can't do with any other software. But when you do get into the creator and the digitizer levels, it just opens the door to unlimited creativity. So uh, have fun playing with your software. And until next time, we'll see you soon.